Hey guys, Chris Bennett here again, your blockchain beard guy. I uh, told you last time we talked, uh, this next time, I wanted to talk to you guys about some of the opportunities that the blockchain opens up in the sales and marketing place, uh, especially for building a brand and engaging with your customers. Um, to kind of continue the theme I was talking on last time, a lot of people outside of technology who aren't developers or, or work with technology are really interested in what's going on with blockchain right now, uh, but they feel that there's just not a place for them to plug in and contribute. Uh, or that the opportunities aren't there for them yet. And I'm trying to uh, dissuade people of that idea and tell you nothing could be further from the truth. So today I wanna to talk about blockchain and some of the implications that this technology has, especially for folks in sales and marketing, and especially for folks in sales and marketing in the B2B space. Um, so let me give you guys a quick example. Let's pretend you've got a small child and she has a deadly pesticide allergy. And so you have to be very careful when you go to the store to always buy the organic produce that hasn't been treated with any pesticide that your young daughter might have a bad reaction to. So you go to the grocery store and you always look for the USDA organic sticker there on the produce. And that makes you feel pretty good. But you always wonder in the back of your mind, how do I know that someone just didn't print that sticker and stick them on and lie about the origins of this product? Um, especially because the ramifications are so high if that did happen to you. Um, well, one of the things blockchain can do is capture the whole product life cycle of a good. So imagine not relying on that sticker, but being able to pull out your phone and scan a QR code, and you see the following. You see that the apples you're about to buy are organic, and they were grown on Mary's Organic Orchard. And Mary's Organic Orchard treated these apples and all of the apples grown on her orchard uh, with Sally's Organic Pesticides. And Sally's Organic Pesticides uh, makes me feel a lot better. I know that there's nothing there I need to worry about from a safety perspective. And then I can also see other interesting things. Uh, perhaps that these apples were delivered to the store from John's Electric Trucking. And John has just brought a new fleet of electric Tesla semis. And he wants to use that to help build up his brand. Well, if I'm John today and I own that trucking company, I don't have a way to really market myself in the consumer's mind, to make them feel good about buying products that were delivered with my environmentally friendly electric semis. Blockchain changes that, and now consumers can go and look at their produce, or their laundry detergent, or their toothpaste, or anything else they buy, and see whether or not it was delivered with my electric trucking service. That allows me to establish brand and mind share in the consumer's mind in a way that was never possible before. And it gives me the incentive, now that I'm more visible in the value chain, uh, to start acting a bit more responsibly. Maybe it pushes me over the edge to write the big check to buy those new electric trucks because I know it's going to be good for my brand and for my image. Um, so just a little uh, food for thought for you guys. Uh, like I said, I think the business to business space uh, is, is really one of the most overlooked opportunities right now in blockchain uh, just because it, it gives people in the B2B space this amazing chance uh, to grab mind share and to build a brand in the consumer's mind. So as always, I'd love to hear what you guys think. Um, if you're in this space, sales and marketing or blockchain, and you agree or disagree, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Um, other than that, keep watching. We'll be here next time. Chris Bennett, your blockchain beard guy, to talk about what's going on in the world of blockchain.